Connecting Faith follows the lives of three young Muslims growing up in Kuala Lumpur, Dhaka and London, three major world cities. The film will explore their unique views about what Islam means to them in the context of the current socio-political climate where perceptions of Islam are varied and sometimes even misguided. My name is Abhin Ali, I'm 20 years old, I'm doing my bachelor's in business administration in North-South University. My mother is a physician and my father is retired but he's doing a little writing right now. And my sister, I have only one sister and she's doing computer science in North-South. I wasn't brought up in a strict Muslim family. It was quite liberal. They told us to study and you have to work because my mom is a working person and she always taught us uh, you, your career is first, you build up your own future and get married or s something like that. They let me go out, they let me have friends, even male friends. They don't restrict me from that. But there is a barrier. I'm not wild about anything. And nowadays, women are working in places because they understood that they have to build their careers. They, they try to get that freedom. I regard myself as Muslim because it's faith. And I'm proud to be a Muslim. I don't say that I'm not Muslim because I wasn't brought up in a strict Muslim family. It is rules and regulations, but you have to believe in something. If I'm not brought up strictly, if I don't pray, I, that doesn't make me a bad Muslim. My father prays five times a day. He believes that Anything and everything that is in Quran and Hadith needs to be practiced. He does all that stuff that needs to be done. But he also has the f mentality to let us two girls, his both daughters, be free. My mother, she doesn't pray. She believes in a higher spirit. She believes that, yes, there is Allah, but she's not like praying and obsessed about Allah. My Nana was a very good Muslim, uh, pure-hearted Muslim. What, uh, he used to pray and do all that stuff. She was brought up like that, but she doesn't show it. She's like, I have faith, it's my year, I'm honest to myself, and that is what I am. That is my religion, I am true. I'm not doing anything bad. 
and my sister she's also very religious she prays and all uh, yeah she also maintains that uh, i am muslim i have to pray i pray for m myself and she goes out she intends to be open minded and a very good religious person they don't put any m pressure like you don't have you can't do that you can't do this uh, you have to do that but they draw a line you can't wear clothes that are revealing you can't be too much outgoing and you can't be too much f free mixing with like having sex every time i go out or anything Bangladesh is a very religious country, but people perceive it as it's a very strict Muslim country. We have our freedom, we maintain our religion whenever we want, but they are free-minded. They welcome any religion, they welcome any culture. Most of them do, most of my generation do. Even the main imam, who's the head of uh, Islamic year, he also respects other religion, other people's perspectives. Real Muslims who are really educated, they have freedom, they have an open mind. After September 11th, people from other religions they thought that Muslims were bad, Muslims were trying to impose on them or like destroy other religions. Whoever did that in September 11th was a very naive thing to do because it's a global tower. The world business is held over there. If they're trying to kill people in that tower, they're killing people all over the world and if that was a Afghanistan issue or Iraq issue I don't know whatever issue that was that had to be handled in a political way they dragged that religion thing with them we are doing jihad that was not true and they should try to tell a lot other religions that Muslim religion is not that. It is not about killing. It is not about trying to make other religion, religious people become Muslim. It is about keeping a faith. It has very scientific things in it. So people perceive it as a very negative thing. We can try to change it. If people knew that there are people like uh, me who believes in Allah and not is really is strict well, I think they're they're gonna change their mind about Muslim religion people should perceive it in a really different way that they shouldn't hate Muslims for being Muslims they should try to know that person What's that like? What's that religion like? And I'm not saying that most of the people in our religion think, uh, yeah, we're welcoming. But if they are like me, they'll try to change that hatred. I hope it will happen someday. Bangladeshi society, it's really getting some Western impacts because India has developed so rapidly. 
and we intend to copy things it's a very bad habit but we do and for that reason it has uh, modernized a bit and it's not that kind of poor bangladesh thing like it's really bad in dhaka or in bangladesh and if you go around i don't see uh, bad things about bangladesh it's quite okay only thing you have to deal with is the society and that has nothing to do with religion people are changing i mean changing their way of thinking i am becoming westernized influenced by the television and everything but it never made me want to leave bangladesh because it is a country with religious backgrounds but i'm brought up here and i'm really comfortable here i have to maintain a borderline every society has that even in uh, even abroad even uk even usa australia whatever you say they have rules i don't see any problem uh, maintaining our society in bangladesh I want to be a person who can influence people to change their way of thinking. I mostly want to help this women in our country. You can have friends. I want to change that way of thinking that a person has many friends and goes out that makes that girl a bad girl. I don't want that to happen because if a boy goes out they don't say anything about the boy. They just say that girl is bad. I want to be in a place where I can influence on people any way I can. And if that means I have to study so really hard and be in a really higher place, I will be in that place. If I have to be in the media line, I will be in the media line to influence people. But I want to make that difference because I suffered. So I wanted to have my freedom. I struggled. I keep on struggling. I still go out, and I want to change that thinking of society. So I want to be in a place where I can influence people.
My name is Nora Islam, I'm age 25. I was born in Manchester, um, came to London when I was one year old. I've been living in Marlin for 24 years. I have a big family, I've got five, four older sisters, a younger sister, and I've got two younger brothers as well. So we come from quite a big family. Uh, I've just finished my degree in multimedia systems. I work part-time, uh, two jobs at Diesel, and also I run a mini lab at Boots the Chemist, which I've been doing for quite a long time as well. I enjoy photography, uh, multimedia, uh, such as animation, 3D. And I'm hoping to incorporate my photography with the multimedia side, like interior design um, and other 3D work, which I like. When I take a walk through Brick Lane, um, I do see a lot of similarities, especially over the recent years where they've got rickshaws travelling through it and especially if you're walking down at night, it's very noisy and it kind of reflects Silet. When I was in Silet, I kind of get a flashback of that. Even the smell, there's, sometimes you can walk down and there's like a foul smell, but it kind of puts you back in Silet um, all of a sudden and you know, you just, you just stand and you just see how similar it is with all the people standing outside and it's a very huge Bengali community as it's now called Bangladesh. Religion to me is the most important thing in my life. Uh, it's something that guides me through, although I'm not fully practicing it is still the strongest belief that I have in my life. My family are quite religious. My father was very religious uh, when he was alive and he used to send us to like private tuition for Arabic classes. Uh, we studied that, um, my whole family, my brothers and my sisters. It was quite intense because we'd finish school, we'd come back and then we'd have other private tuition, we'd go on for like one and a half hour, two hours. Although we studied it, we weren't taught it probably in the sense that we learned how to read it, we didn't really understand it, we didn't know the meaning of what we was reading, uh, we'd just be reading it, so I think that's, that could have helped when we were taught, if we knew the meaning of it. I have a, a lot of friends who are fully practicing, relatives, my sisters, my mother. My, my family know that I'm not, I'm not practicing it um, at this stage, but they feel that religion has to be a decision that you have to make by yourself and it's not something they can force you into or pressurise into. All they can do is just make you aware of it, which my father and my rest of the family have actually done. It's something on my mind every day. If I'm, if I'm outside or, you know, when I come to work or if I've gone around to my sisters or when I, even when I see someone pray, it definitely kicks in my head that, you know, why am I not doing that? I always have feelings inside me that, yes, this is something I should be doing, but there's something always that keeps me from doing it. I think it could be because there's a lot of sacrifice that I may have to make, which I feel that I may not be ready to make at this moment, but it's something that I've 100% belief in, and I hope, I mean, it's a, it's a relationship between myself and Allah SWT, and I hope that, um, I, I mean, I'll just have to answer to Allah SWT and no one else. So, hopefully, we, and very soon, I'll be studying and practicing my religion in more depth than I am now. Being a good Muslim would be to cover all five pillars of Islam. Um, to me, Islam is the complete way of life and it covers everything in life that you'd need, uh, from eating to marriage to, to fighting to everything. So when, when I'm told or when, I've, when I'm given dawah, either from my friend or my relatives, and it doesn't feel like you know rubbish to me or anything. It makes complete sense to me, and I think it kind of takes off from there. Then life falls into place. You know exactly what you need to do, exactly what you shouldn't have to do, and I think that's the start of it. My friends that are practicing, they're really good people. They always try and guide me into the right way. Friends that are not practicing, it's just it's a division. And you can see the difference and I would so much like to be on the side that they are practicing because life for them runs really smooth, it's not really hectic. Everything from vocabulary to scheduling your day is completely different. I've met people over the years who haven't been like really intelligent but as soon as they've taken religion on board, their whole lifestyle is completely different. They're more focused on life, on education, on family and uh, this is exactly what I want in the future. I mean, I'd like when I do have a family, I'd like my family to go down on this path as well.
as this is not an excuse for me not to be practicing my religion but i feel being born and being bred in uh, london has had something to do with it from going to school to going to studying at college uh, work even from you know simplest thing from tv you know all these things has an effect and it's just put me in a western view of life although i still know my roots and culture i still accept that but i think living in london for such a long time has kind of had that view of me but like i said um i've met people who've who are in the same boat as me but have changed all of a sudden temptation is always around you can go to work you can go to university you can be walking on the street temptation is always there and it's always it's just calling you in you know as if i'm here just use me you know it could be from anything and i think that's what it is i think i don't have the willpower sometimes to resist temptation and that is something that I need to work on in order to take my religion more seriously. It could be from a simple thing to going out with a meal with work colleagues or going to prayers and you know a decision would be made automatically it's like yeah you know, let me just go for the meal or you know you could be walking down the street and you know if, uh, there's a nice female or someone walking down and you automatically just look and you you assume it's human nature but this is more of a western view that it's human nature because in Islam it's not. I've met some extremists in East London and, um, and other places as well and sometimes I feel that uh, some of it some of what they're saying makes sense but it's just it's just too much sometimes and I think this is uh, these people put the wrong idea on the western world uh, when they hear people like this they assume that every other Muslim is like this and they kind of portray the wrong image of Islam. Islam is a very peaceful religion and does nothing but create peace. Islam even means peace. There is nothing extreme about it and I feel that some of these people they kind of portrayed the wrong image for us. If you were to meet someone who is very ignorant they'd automatically think every other Muslim person is, is like them and I feel that is very wrong and Islam should be portrayed only in the right way. Over the years I've noticed a huge change and I've noticed more and more uh, practicing brothers and sisters in East London and um, I think there's a new breed definitely. I think this is it's this new generation that have actually come out and who have been taught. I mean people like my parents and the older generation, they didn't have a chance because when they came here all they were doing was just working. But this next generation, they've worked, they've studied, they've educated themselves and they've even taken religion board and they know how to how to go about it. They don't need to just be sitting at home and being locked up sometimes. I mean this was this was kind of a view that the older generation portrayed on some of these women and made it look as if, you know, their place in life was at home. But um, a lot of these, a lot of these young Muslim people now, they're they're coming out a lot more. They're trying to show people the right way uh, to go about Islam. Um, there's a lot of things which they didn't know about, such as working and things like this, um, which they uh, may be allowed to do. And a lot of husbands are actually accepting the fact that their wives or their sisters can work, and there's not a problem if they do work. You know, they can be self-sufficient and earn for themselves, and kind of understand life a little bit more by communicating with different genders, different um, religions and even working with, um, you know, different people. To me the media play a, play a vital role and it can be very hard sometimes when someone who, does a, who would not like to read up on anything and would just like to believe anything they read in either the paper or on the, on the TV that is, it's, it's more of a Western view and they would not like to accept the fact that Islam is a very, very peaceful religion. Um, if they also read up and find out for themselves and not to be ignorant, then they would find this because the media is, at the end of the day, I feel like it's a person's perspective of the religion. It, it wouldn't be summed up. Or when a questionnaire is done, for example, if they were to ask about Islam and they'd go into an area, it just they take their decisions and their answers just from a random of like 20 people, 40 people and they put this on, on media, whether it be newspaper, the TV and thousands and millions even people watch this, people who can't be bothered to read up 
on uh, whatever the issue is. It could be war, it could be, it could be the religion, and they automatically feel that whatever's being read is is true. And I think that that makes a huge, huge um, impression on our religion because we haven't had our, had our say. And since September 11, I kind of not bothered like watching the news or even reading the paper with regards to issues like that because I feel that it's, we will never know the real reasons. And I think, you know, the media ain't helping too much by portraying a good image of Islam at some times or some papers. In life, I would firstly, I would just like to be happy and enjoy my job. Uh, money isn't a big issue to me as long as I can enjoy life and that would be the main thing. Uh, in terms of job, I would like to just be creative. I would not like to be stuck in the office or anything like you know, have like a, a general or normal nine to five, uh, something like that don't really interest me at all. I'd like to be able to express my ideas, whether it be visual or in paper and just like to enjoy it like that. Malati Abdul Hamid. I am 20, going to be 21 this November, and I am a second year student in International Islamic University. I'm studying law. My father, he is working as a Supreme Court judge, and my mother, she is working with the Cancer Society, National Cancer Society, as a nurse manager. I have four siblings. I am the youngest. Religion has always played a very important role in my family. I think it will go to the way we are brought up and the way my parents were brought up by their parents. My grandfather on my father's side, he is an imam in the kampong, in the village. And he is at the same time very open-minded. So we have this approach to Islam in our family, whereby my father will always initiate discussions. And I guess based on this, that's the way my family were, were shaped, based on discussions. And therefore, instead of just you know compelling your children to do something, then they might rebel. But if you discuss it out, then they see all the points, and it comes more naturally. And we want to do it by our own self, not because we are compelled to do so. Islam is beautiful. But like a beautiful painting, you show it to a person to appreciate it. And you maybe point out a few points that is fine and you teach a person to appreciate it. But you can't compel someone to say that it's beautiful if their heart do not say so. So that is very much the way we were brought up. My father taught us about Islam in a very laid back manner, not meaning to say that he neglected it, no. But he will try to inculcate it into, even when we're small, when we're playing, stuff like that. And he will try to inculcate all the values, very informally. So therefore, it comes easily. Of course, as a Muslim, we have to fulfill all our obligations. But at the same time, for us to judge another person immediately without knowing more about a person and to direct him or her to do something without even explaining the hikmah, we call it the wisdom behind it, that is wrong. Islam is a moral framework and the, the concept of taqwa 
or we call it in English God consciousness is very much the, the basic principle of it. It is when before doing everything, if you have that God consciousness at the back of your mind, then it will give a purpose to what you're doing. And once you know your purpose, you won't be led astray from, from the right path. Even if you, you, know, you sway once in a while and we are human, we will. But as long as we keep on thinking, on what is the purpose of me doing this? And we have the God consciousness, then we'll just be led back to the, to the path. Firstly, on fashion, it is a wrong conception to think that for you to be Islamic, you have to dress like an Arab. Like my father always says this, and he said that God made me a Malay because he wants me to be a Malay. And he only wants us to be Muslims, not Arabs. So we are proud of our heritage. We are proud to be Malay. We are proud to be Malaysian. Of course, when we go to the mall, there are a lot of dresses that are attractive and up to the trend. But then, at the same time, you want to be dressed well. So there is always opportunity for you to blend in, to, to mix the two. To dress Islamically is only to cover the aura. And it doesn't matter however fashion you do it, as long as you do it, it's okay. And I don't find any problem with that. The Western think that Muslim women are oppressed and we are weak and we are submissive to men. The reason why they think so is because they believe what they see in the television. And the only things that you see in the television is the news report by the CNN and NBC on the situation of women in Afghanistan and or Pakistan and all the honor killing. And those are the topics that are always highlighted. It has a message to bring this perception to the society. And it worked. Most Westerners believe this. When I went to the South Africa for one international competition, everybody was surprised because the contingent from Malaysia comprised of three women. And all of us are wearing headscarves and long sleeves. But at the same time, they are very surprised to find us talking in English, even going to university. And the next level is representing Malaysia because they know Malaysia is a multiracial country. The portrayal of all these women have one thing in common. That is the culture of the society on the treatment of women. Because if you study closely, then you will see that the mistreatment of women are rampant in certain areas of the world. And if you see towards the Southeast Asian countries, even Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, the women are treated better. The way women were mistreated um, by the men in some societies are influenced by their culture and their history, not because of religion. However, the men there seek justification in religion by highlighting one verse and neglecting another because they, they have to justify their act in order to, to treat women that way and that is just wrong. I do think that the mistreatment of women, the continuity of it is very much linked to their education system and also the social system. As long as you do not provide education equally to both men and women, you will have this social problem in the country. For example, I am very grateful to be in Malaysia because after going out and meeting all these other people, and they are always telling me that you are so different from what we see on the TV. How come? And I just think that it's because I'm here. I'm grateful of it because the women have always been an important part in the society, even historically. So we have that culture, and once Islam come in, it strengthens the culture. It's like, ah, it's religious and cultural at the same time. And then now we have education for both. It's the same. And the approach to education, they won't be biased 
or misinterpreted on purpose to justify anything. So like we can see here in the International Islamic University, the majority of the students are women. We are active, we participated in many competitions. Both men and women are given equal opportunities. We are judged based on merit, not based on gender. There is a bond between the Muslim women. All of us have the common experience. We are all Muslims, we are striving towards something, and we believe in self-respect and helping each other, yes. And is it religious or cultural? I think it may be both. I do believe there must be open communication between the Muslims and the Westerners, especially after September 11. There are a lot of misconceptions. I do not really know whether it is intentional or not. We should be open-minded because we all know that we are moving towards a globalized world and we can't afford to live isolated. We'll be bound to, to meet each other. I think it's better for us to start now to make sure that when we do, we will do so amicably and have respect to one another. I do get this feeling that sometimes the Western seemed condescending towards the Muslim. And this may encourage anger towards the Muslim. And I guess all these cultural and religious clashes can be worked out as long as we are honest to ourselves that we really want to work it out. And also we have respect for the other group. Unless we have respect for the other group, it won't be an open line communication and it won't work. There is a misrepresentation to Islam itself. It happens. When they portray Islam, there seems to be a tone whereby it seems like it is to belittle whatever we believe in. And sometimes it can get to us Muslims when it's not portrayed neutrally, at least neutrally. It is very funny, personally, to see how the veil has affected so many people. It's just another piece of cloth. But some Westerners are afraid of it. The equation seems to be, oh, you are a Muslim plus headscarf equal terrorist and oppressed if you are a woman. They always come up to me and say this, oh, you're wearing a scarf. It's got yes. But you're talking such, uh, you're speaking in a good English. And I was saying, what's the connection? I don't understand the way they reason it out that if you wear a scarf, therefore you're not educated, and therefore you have like 12 children and married by 16, and you can't speak English. <laughs> English is something that you learn at school. A scarf is just the way you present yourself. Why should it change the way you learn? Malaysia is very unique. We have all these races and different religions, but at the same time we are progressing very well. The big difference between Malaysia and other Islamic nations is that we are able to work out all our differences and work for one purpose, for the development of the nation. We respect each other's, the, um, our diversity, but at the same time we don't pick on it to stop us from progressing. We work towards one, one goal and it has been very successful. I do not know yet what I want to be specifically in the future. But what I do know now is that I want to be a person who brings in change for the betterment of Muslim society and Malaysia as a whole.